Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs, episode 530 for Wednesday, March 6th, Day of the Dude 2024. Folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show where we take a few ideas, we dissect them, we analyze them, we use them to tune our business brains so that each and every one of us can increase our ability to lead those charmed lives. Speaking of leading charmed lives, our sponsor at GoSquaredAway.contact, go, sorry, GoSquaredAway.com slash contact. That's a much better URL to visit. GoSquaredAway.com slash contact. Empowers highly educated military spouses to become your trusted remote executive assistants. We'll talk more in depth about that in a little bit. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm still out here in California, Dave. How you doing? I'm good. good. I um, I'm, I'm good. I'm comfortable. Shannon, I don't like that. Uh-oh. Yeah. Comfort, comfort crisis? I think so. I don't know. I mean, there's always things that I have. There's pressures. I, it, it's not that yeah. I'm comfortable. It's that I'm uncomfortable. Oh. And and the issue, so maybe a little business therapy to start today's sure. episode. Um, when I, there there are, have been times, I, I'm sure there will be times again in the future. I just haven't experienced them yet. Uh, where I have been either panicked or had a chip on my shoulder or something that drives me to really like get down to the grindstone and push the business forward, businesses forward, pressure, 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 Pressure. right? Whatever it is, pressure, but it could be like, there's that chip on the shoulder. Sometimes it's like, I got to prove something to that person, right? You know, it's the, the ego, right? And, and, and other times it's, it's like financial pressure or, you know, something that really just kind of puts instills a little bit of panic that drive, whatever it is that makes it easy for me to just push harder than I normally do by default. And, and that state of being can last for months or even years. And then it sort of retreats a little bit. It doesn't mean that I, you know, sit around and do nothing all day. I still do all my things. No, it's a feeling. Right. But it's that feeling isn't there. And I know that when I have that feeling, I am more productive in growing the business yeah. than I am when I don't have that feeling. And, I, you know, I've, I've explained on this show before the uh, willpower points or discipline points system idea that I have where we're, we all wake up with a certain number of willpower points and you have to be careful what you spend them on because you only have the fixed amount. And and once you've spent them, you, you know, you can't double dip that well is dry until the next day. And so the idea is to come up with a series of brain hacks that get all the things done and do the things that you need to do right. without by, by wanting to do them instead of using willpower to get them done. Yeah, right. You, and you get to do them. Instead you of get to do them. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when tricks. I've been in those pressure, panic moments, whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, I wake up and it's like, oh man, I get to work on the things that grow the business. I get to do that stuff. And sometimes it can just be, the, you know, the the ego of being able to grow the business. Yeah. And and then other times, like now, it's not that I'm I'm I don't want to grow the business. It's it's that I'm not the drive. The the, the amount yeah. of drive wavers. Yeah, My guess is the amount of drive that I have now is is probably higher than. Um, let's say the average, but I don't yeah, even know I what would, the heck that I means. Would, I would definitely agree with that. You know, but but it's still, I know that I'm capable of more and I'm trying to figure out how to unlock that all the time, at will, right? It's like you've yeah. told me before, you you see the ego, it, egos is, isn't bad. It can be one's downfall if it, it rules be, yeah. you. Sure. But if you use it like a tool, it can be great. Can and be I true. think- this is related to that, like finding a way to turn that drive on and off and use it like a tool. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of, I don't, I don't know the magic answer to this yet though. The, the ego thing is learning how to ramp it up and, and exactly. You, yeah. You ramp it up because 
as entrepreneurs, it's often lonely and you need to pump yourself up frequently and, and learn to pat yourself on the back and recognize your skills and the wins that you have yep. and ramp, ramp it down. So you're not a jerk and you can be humble and you could cert like, you know, lead through service and helping other people and, and that, that kind of thing. Yeah. But I, I would say, um, your, what you're talking about is very common in people, I think, entrepreneurs that get to the point in life that we are, right? Yes. Had some success, built some wealth. My suggestion, um, if the bank account looks good, if your investments look good, stop looking at them. <laughs> if you're, uh, yeah. The other thing is, what is your next zero? What are <sighs> can you start? at zero at again something you know nothing about not a music thing not a yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever something you know and, and you probably went through it when you know other businesses that you started in the last few years like i know nothing about this oh yeah that, that's the challenge I, i'm in the pro you know when i sold tech restore and didn't know what to do and all of a sudden there was no one around but me I was yeah. like, what do I do? And I talked about it on this show. I said, yes. okay, I'm going to start a business just using my phone because, and I'm going to get involved in social commerce. To, I don't know anything about this. I'm going to start at zero. And I was super nervous and had, you know, anxiety. It's like, how do I do it? What do I, what do I even do? But that starting at zero, it, it is the challenge. I, for me, that, oh no, that, I'm, that I'm thinking of, this is it. The, the, when, when my back's against the wall, like yeah. that's the, that, but, but if your back feels too much against the wall, like, and we each have a no. different, uh, you know, a different, a uh, different yeah, hit, tipping point yeah. of this, yep. but wherever that, that, wherever that is, like, you can get to a point where you're, you know, paralyzed and that, yeah. that that's not what you want. No, but, no, 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 no. A little bit of that drive, like Absolutely. that hunger, I, you know, yeah. it was like, like Steve Jobs loved to quote the, the words on the back of the whole earth catalog, right? That from Stuart brand, yeah. it said, stay hungry, stay foolish. Exactly. And, and I, th that's to your point, right? Yeah. Where, what's your zero? What don't yeah. you know? And go be I, hungry about that. That's right. And I think it's also to try to identify your motivators. And this may sound kind of silly. We have a, a wonderful life. We've, I've, you know, like you, we've been grinding for decades to build this charmed life that we lead. Right. Yes. And I do, I do recognize that. But I also recognize that I'm still trying to impress my wife after 30 years. Yeah. I want her to be proud of me. I want her to see me working hard. And now a lot of that I've shifted to my kids. I want them to see me achieving something new. Like I, I, you know, I've talked about on the show here, I'm trying to build a, something on the X platform, right? Trying yeah, yeah. to grow. I, and I, don't, I started at zero not yep. too long ago and figuring this out. And I've discussed my growth on the show and different things. And I've been sharing it with my kids and I always joke around. I'm like, oh, I'm going to be an influencer or whatever, you know, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but I'm putting it out there and I want to be sure they see me succeed. They're my big, you know, they always say you shouldn't worry about what other people think. I totally worry about what other people think. Yeah. And I'd be the first to admit it. The people that mean the most to me, that's who I, I mean, I don't stress about it, but they're the most important people that I want to impress. And yeah. Don't, don't, so those things are starting at zero. Don't look at your bank account and your investments. If you're already, if they're good, hopefully yeah. you've, if yeah, you're if they're looking not, for motivation, right? Yeah. yeah. If they're not good, you should look at them every day. Cause that'll motivate you to, right. you know, right, to right. hustle. So right. you, you can take that advice. If you're in your, your twenties or, or thirties and just getting going and you, you want to look at it and go, man, I got to hustle. Well, that motivated the heck out of me when I was. Yeah, of course. Age. But, of but course. now I, I don't look at it now because I'm like, okay, it's just kind of got momentum. It's doing its thing. Uh, there's nothing I can do. You know, I'm focusing on this. And it's also hard to give up something that's working. Like I built that social commerce business and I should have given it up, you know, a year ago or a year yeah, and a half ago. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. I, but I kept dude. on to it. I kept <laughs> on to it because it made me feel good to ship something every day instead of putting the time in to build something that may take me a year to build, but it's going to have five or six years of runway where yes. the, the, the social commerce business was on the, on the way out, on the I was, way out. I was bored. I did it. I built this, you know, I sold $3.7 million worth of this stuff and did it with my phone and all this kind of, but I, I was like, okay, now what? So yeah. don't look at your bank 
find out who you want to impress, uh, give up something that you, you don't, they don't, doesn't need you anymore and start again at zero. That's my four tips. Of the I gotta, I gotta find out if you take my insurance, uh, <laughs> so that I can see if you qualify for me to just give Got you a it. copay for this. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's great. All right, Business Brain listeners, let's dive into the world of entrepreneurial wizardry where your to-do list stretches longer than a magician's scarf. Ever feel like the little things are actually gremlins gnawing at your productivity? I know I do. Enter our sponsor, Squared Away, the Gandalf of your business journey, banishing chaos with a staff of remote executive assistants. These aren't just any assistants. They're highly educated military spouses with the kind of proactive magic that would make even Merlin take notes. Whether it's event planning, proofreading, or even booking a flight for your adventurous dog, Squared Away has got you covered. And yes, they've even tackled the elusive quest of finding the perfect puppeteer for that company retreat. Because why not? Think you could lean on your squared away team for everything from navigating the treacherous waters of travel itineraries to deciphering the ancient scrolls of paperwork. And by ancient scrolls, of course, I mean anything that requires more than two steps to fill out. So if you're ready to delegate like a pro and finally have time to plan that virtual baby shower or, you know, grow your business, squared away is your go to contact squared away today to see how they can support your business. Just go to GoSquaredAway.com slash contact. That's GoSquaredAway.com slash contact. Magic wand not included, but definitely not needed. And our thanks to Squared Away for sponsoring this episode. All right. So you got anything on your mind? Now that we've, now that we've processed what's on my mind, Shannon, what's on your mind? <laughs> I do have something on my mind. So. I t we're talking about starting over at zero, which I'm in the process of doing right now, trying to build a following. I don't know anything about that. Uh, you know, getting, I mean, we talked about this thousand true fans concept on the show yeah. a bunch of times. And I'm just like, okay, you know, I've never done that. So why don't I try to do that and also share my knowledge? I feel uh, compelled to give back and to help other people that are, that are getting started because I would love to have somebody help me. Yes. Um, and of course, yeah, I want to monetize it because it's a good measuring stick uh, with what if it's working or not. But when you're building a following and you're putting your name out there, there's some risk involved in it, which is fine. I, I like yes. risk, but also R risk, risk can be one of those drivers. Yeah. 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 And but also like your personal, we were talking about ego, you know, like, okay, let's say on Twitter, wherever you're building it, Instagram, if you're building this following, TikTok, whatever. Yep. You're going to have a lot of people that are going to come out and want to criticize you, talk bad about you, troll your, you know, post, tell you you're an idiot or whatever of sure. foul, foul things. So as I was looking at this, I was like, man, some of these, when I first, you know, I've, I've probably been working on this since September. Okay. And some of those early comments that I got from people were like, oh, that kind of hurts. You know, you're, you're, yeah. <laughs> you, you take it internally. So I started yeah. looking around and trying to study people that had like hundreds of thousands of followers and, you know, whatever. How do they deal with this? And yeah. Thing. And so I, and I came across a book called um, The Alter Ego Effect by an author by the name of Todd Herman. And Todd, uh, was an advisor like a coach with you know high-end athletes and okay um, stars and this kind of thing and and the his concept here is that if you're going to be in the public light of, at any level really business athlete you know some kind of a you know performer yeah you you should build an alter ego that protects your personal self from those types of criticisms that I just mentioned, but also protects you from going crazy with I'm so great or whatever. And oh. I'll give you a couple examples. So one of the examples is, he mentions is uh, Beyonce. She hasn't, she, you know, when she's up on stage and everything else and she's like, well, that's not me. That's Sasha fierce. <sighs> and she invented this character to protect her. And this guy breaks it down in this alter ego effect. One of his most famous clients is Kobe Bryant. Bryan. Okay. Yeah. And Kobe was having the same problem, like feeling really vulnerable and trying things. And so they came up with this alter ego called the Black Mamba, the snake. 
Sure. And so he would just say, and there's some great interviews. If you go to, uh, on the way, you know, link it, but the alter ego effect.com, you can see some of the interviews and all this stuff. And there's Kobe saying, he's like, well, I go out there and I have nothing to fear because that's not Kobe Bryant. That's yeah. black Mamba. And so by building this separation of a character and, and one of the things I love too, is Herman talks about, you think, oh, Clark Kent, well, his alter ego was Superman. No, 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 it's the opposite. It's the opposite. <laughs> yeah. Superman, the alter ego was Clark, you know, to yes. protect himself. And it just, even in business, I think this could be very important because many times, like I'll, I'll lay it out here, like when I was younger, I, I actually wanted my business not to be where my friends saw it because I was worried if I failed, they would think I was a loser. Right, and I think that drove me into this kind of wholesale B two B, little bit, little bit gray, murky, uh, you know, business versus I'm going to build this huge retail or whatever. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to have all this exposure. I never had that. People always ask me, "What do you do?" You know, instead of, "Oh, I saw your trucks and I yeah, saw right, your building," because right, right. that was way more vulnerable for me to totally. Risk, oh no, I'm right? the same. I'm the same way. Yep. Yeah, I, yeah. I'd rather I, like I never built a business that my friends would use i'm always surprised i mean a after you know 25 years of the mac yeah. observer's existence i'm less surprised now when people say oh yeah i know about that site it's like yeah i, I know right. you do like but yes but everything else and even that at the beginning was not built for people that i yeah. knew right. it was built for other people yeah, yeah. and i think yeah. it kind of drove me so this I'm really, I'm about halfway through the book. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And huh. I, I'm going to do this is develop. And I think I would have been a better business person. And maybe even, I took a lot of risk. I have taken a lot of risk in my sure. business career. And I, I still do it. But I probably, well, looking back, it's very easy to say this, of course. But maybe I would have felt less uh, vulnerable if I had this kind of other alter ego sitting out here that was like, well, that's not me. That's whatever, you know, and, uh, you know, I just, you could pick, you could make it up, you can pick a character, you can do whatever. And, you know, uh, the, the author kind of walks you through developing in this concept and why it's important. And, and, you know, it, it helps you do more things than you otherwise would. And see, I think this might be the answer to my question in the beginning of the show. Could be. It's one more tool in your toolbox right yes right. not yes it's not like the end all be yes. all but correct but this could be an answer not the yeah. answer yeah. but yeah yeah uh. and, and, and figure it out so i'm gonna do this like you know today i've had my first post on x that's got over a million you know views that's and, awesome <laughs> yeah and, and thousands of comments it's a silly post sure sure there's lots of people trying to tear me down in there Oh, and yeah. I have gotten very comfortable with like, oh, that's whatever. This is just a character. And, and it's, you know, it's my thing. And I've got, okay, what am I going to, I don't know. I'm not even sure exactly what it is yet, but I know it's there. Yeah. And, and it's kind of shielding me from a lot of that, uh, those arrows that, that people want to shoot at, at people that are successful. And I'm going to be successful here. There is no doubt in my mind yep. because I feel the energy and, and uh, I, I actually, I've, I'm going to, I want to love to talk about that in our next show about how the energy works and how I yeah, think that's a good sign. That sounds but, great. But yeah, yeah, so anyway, alter ego effect.com. Take a look, you know, the book, Todd Herman. Um, and I'm going to try to reach out to him once I get finished with the book. Who knows? Maybe we can get him to come on the show and talk about it. That's great. Yeah, that's there's cool. a, there's a great line in the opening song a great lyric in the opening song of uh, a musical called hedwig and the angry inch very off the beaten path yeah. musical uh but the, the the song is called tear me down and the 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 chorus of it ends with you want me baby i dare you try yeah. and tear me down uh, yeah take us home <laughs> I'm, I'm taking us home man yeah absolutely no it's good it's good stuff wait wait where is the uh Oh, did this not start playing? Oh, interesting. There we go. So much. Live, live entertainment, folks. Live entertainment. Yupper. Thanks for hanging out with us, folks. Thank you for... Yeah, actually, thank you for sending in all your stuff. It's been a while since we've uh, read any of your comments and questions on the show. We will have some of that next week, I promise. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Check out our sponsors. GoSquaredAway.com slash contact and make sure 
you sign up for our newsletter at businessbrain.show. You can also send us feedback at feedback at businessbrain.show. We'll see you on Friday. Keep living that charmed life.